Hi, this is Andy Scarborough coming back to you from Crownworks. We all know that Monday is the high holy day for hairdressers. So today, I'd like to share with you a little bit about my education in education. For about 10 years now, I have been uh, had the privileged access of teaching hairdressers everything from hair color to hair cutting, um, some business coaching tips. And it's been amazing because what it's provided me are a lot of super nerd fest trainings where I travel all over the country, um, spend countless hours and dollars and days in the airports and auditoriums, learning from some of the truly the living legends in our industry about what makes a terrific experience for an attendee. And one of the things they really focus on is your introduction uh, in the beginning, you are to basically earn the right to be there. Basically, that earn the right portion of the program is really about you standing up there for a few minutes and explaining why you're worth listening to. Um, that often shows up as people touting their credentials or their celebrity clientele or how many salons they own worldwide. And that's all really valuable. You know, you want to know that you're speaking to an expert. But there was something about that that struck me once as just really inherently not okay. As a hairstylist, continuing education is a must. Like you gotta keep learning. The chemicals, the technical skills, the tools themselves are changing all of the time. So we have to be on top of that. But it can also be kind of a slippery slope, right? When we start chasing that perfection addiction, then it just, it kind of never ends. As hairstylists, we are addicts. We are first approval addicts, and that's a whole nother conversation for a different, a different video. Um, but we are addicts to style, addicts to trend, addicts to being the best, addicts to being perfect. We are perfection addicts, and that shows up in all kinds of ways. The truth is that no amount of hours or dollars or mentors will ever make up for that thirst for perfectionism. There will always be something else that you need. There will always be some new credential, some new licensing, some new certification that's gonna make you worthy of charging what you need to charge or having the kind of conversations that you wanna be having. And the truth is, even when you're there doing it, there's a little sneaky thing that my one of my favorite writers, Neil Gaiman, calls the fraud police, right? Um, any moment you're gonna be found out that you don't actually know what you're talking about. Certainly there are moments in every single classroom that I've ever facilitated where there's someone in that room that knows more than I do. And it's always amazing to discover those moments. You know, there's this exercise that I do at the beginning of my classes where we count all of the cumulative years of hairdressing in the room. So even in a room as small as like 10 people, there's probably a hundred years of hairdressing experience there. I mean, that's a lot of wisdom. Who am I to stand up there and say that I know the absolute true and only way to do anything. And when I started to loosen up that idea and started to treat the classroom as more of a collaborative conversation, much like this, uh, then everything became a lot more fun. So yeah. I had this aha moment with this educator that was coming to shadow me. And we were at a very fancy salon um, with a very full staff. Uh, who had come for this hands-on workshop. And so because she was shadowing me, I really wanted to show her the correct and not often sort of rogue style that we educators take sometimes out in the field. Um, I felt like it was really my obligation to her to show her the correct way to facilitate a class. And so we got to this portion and I sort of tripped over it. I remember standing up there and looking at her across the room and having this wall drop down on me where I just thought, shit, this whole idea about earning the right is sort of bullshit. Of course, I couldn't say that out loud, but then the funny thing happened and I did. And that was a really scary moment for me with my artist shadowing, realizing, fuck, 
this is all a fraud. And I think that there's such a power in saying, I don't know. And I think the more education we have and the higher up we go in that training, the less and less we seem to be able to say, I don't know. And in that I don't know is where there's so much freedom. So often it comes up in a classroom setting that I am presenting something and I get asked a question. Um, a couple of years ago when that waterfall braid was super popular, someone asked me in a braiding class, hey, can you teach us that? And I said, mm, no, I can't, but can anybody hear? And one of the girls stood up in the back and came up and demonstrated this waterfall braid for us and we all learned it. Um, we would have lost that opportunity had I been up there worried about losing my right to facilitate that room by allowing something else in. It's in that power of I don't know, it's in that softening up that we really allow even more abundance and more information and more true knowledge and wisdom um, both about our fellow stylist and about our industry as a whole to come in. When I as an educator stand in front of a room or one of your assistants in your salon wants to show you how to do a better braid, then if there's an ego involved there that's not allowing you to receive that content because you don't feel like they're worthy of sharing that with you, then what a loss. And the truth is too that you know, they say that mastery takes 10,000 hours and at a full-time job roughly, that's about five years at something. Um, so what happens after mastery level? You know, if you can't stand in the conviction that what you know right now is worth sharing, then nothing is really gonna be of value to you after that because nothing anybody else has is worth sharing. Interestingly enough too, you know, even as I make this video, it's funny for me because there's a big piece of this earn the right conversation that's been really hard for me to have um, simply because now I'm fusing both my hair world and my spiritual practice. So I had this experience this summer attending a gathering, the size of which I would only compare in the past to like a hairdressing symposium. Um, so you and a few thousand of your like-minded friends. And I went in all like sunshine and rainbows and so ready to groove with these gals. And I got a lot of, I got a lot of questions about how I'd earned my right. And they'd ask me, you know, well, where did you study? And I'm like, well, L'Oreal mostly. And I remember thinking that that was such a weird thing to experience there. And also sort of amazed at how the idea of worth and credentialing crosses over no matter what the subject line, you know. I really struggled with what right do I have to be having these conversations, you know? There's a term, we call it the little voice, right? That chatter that comes up. And when you're new onto the floor as a hairdresser, you go, oh God, you know, you don't know how to cut a bob. And that's what that little voice is saying. And when you're new to um, education, you go, oh, what are you talking about? They won't listen to you. And to be totally honest, this feels like that again for me. And I'm totally worried the fraud police are gonna come and like leave nasty comments on these videos or make me take them down because I'm not a Peruvian trained shaman or I don't have a black belt in Kundalini. Um, but I really do believe that these conversations are worth having and what I know now is worth sharing. I think that we have these ideas about people, especially people that we respect and look up to, as being these sort of statically perfect pictures. You know, like we look at people like they're Polaroids. Um, when in truth, everybody's a moving picture and everybody's constantly evolving. And whether it's the girl in my classroom who had her moment of growth and visible evolution and standing up and sharing a braid with us, or whether it was me having my breakdown about the absurdity of earning the right and how that tied into earning your inherent worth. 
Um, if we deny those moments, if we shut those down, those may be the only opportunities that we get. I realized that it was no different than anything else, that claiming my beliefs, claiming my worthiness, claiming my belonging in either of those worlds, whether it's a professional hairdressing career or it's um, a spiritual community, there's always going to be someone who knows more than me, but it doesn't mean that what I know now isn't of inherent value. So that's really what I'd like to impart today is the capability that we all have to share what we have right now. You are not a Polaroid, you're a moving picture. And the truth is whatever you know now only looks like that from here. And tomorrow you may learn something else that's gonna change that entirely, whether you learn it on your own or someone amazing comes in and shares that information with you. But it doesn't deny the unique perspective that you're seeing things through right now is exactly what someone else needs to hear. So share it, share it with a client, share it with a colleague, share it with your mom, share it with your sister, share what you've got because it's so inherently valuable because it's seen through your eyes, it's seen through your perspective. And that's what we want to keep chasing, right? We want to keep chasing a broader perspective, not a credentialing, not a certification. Um, we want to embrace bigger knowing. We want to step out of the way of what we think it should look like to allow the receiving of everything that's available. I mean, to go back to that classroom, right? A hundred years of hairdressing amongst 10 people. Somebody in there knows something that's gonna blow my mind and I want to know it. So for me, I'm gonna make an environment available so that we can talk about anything and everything we want. And whether that's crystals or affirmations, uh, it's all welcome here. So one of the tools that I like to use to really claim worthiness are positive affirmation statements starting with I am. Now you know the power of I am because whatever you say after it is true. And just think about it, right? When you're in the salon, if you go around saying, oh, I am slow or I am tired, what do you get more of? slow and tired so the truth of it is again from that like energetic level what we focus on expands and i i truly you know if i don't have any other spiritual belief or life truth um it is that like we are energy and what we focus on expands so there's a ton of power in the claiming something or affirming it for yourself even if it's just you in front of a mirror in your bathroom every day starting a conversation with yourself that has some really positive i am affirmations it may be as simple as i am a qualified hairdresser I am worth what I charge. I am worthy of being here. The real story is that not just hairdressers, but as humans, we're approval addicts. And the truth is, the approval that we need most is the approval from ourselves. So I think that you'll probably be pretty astonished if you start claiming some of that worthiness for yourself to see what other worth starts to show up in the people around you. You may look around and realize that someone is amazing and has a skill you never noticed before because you were too busy worrying whether or not you were good enough at whatever it was yourself. So by giving ourselves that permission and that approval and that certification, right? We certify ourselves as whole and as worthy and as of having something to share because that thing we have to share is what's uniquely ours and that's our perspective. Thanks for joining me today. Till next time, crown on.